So when we're talking about cleaning, we use this phrase cleaning with meaning. And we're not just cleaning to make things beautiful. We're cleaning uh, to actually be able to see things uh, with new fresh eyes and be able to see what's actually going on with our equipment. Here is uh, an example in a laboratory. It may be that at the end of the day, the laboratory technicians clean their equipment. But while they're cleaning their equipment, they can start to see, are there any problems with some of the reagents or the solutions? Are they, um, for example, getting dirty? Is the level low that needs to be replenished? Uh, and so we're actually looking for other things within that idea of our daily work routine of cleaning the equipment. So that clean equipment allows us to check things. Uh, that will facilitate the detection of abnormalities or anomalies with the equipment. Uh, it will help us to see that maybe there's an oil leak where before we couldn't see the oil leak because there was just so much dirt on the equipment and it was so dirty and oily and uh, the floor was dirty and oily anyway and we couldn't detect that oil leak. So cleaning is not just about polishing to make that piece of equipment look more beautiful. It's to look after its health. So for example, you know, it may be that we have an important visitor coming to our factory next week and we decide we're going to give a, a, a quick coat of paint to all the equipment. And we paint over the bits that are rusted and corrosion uh, just to make it look pretty. That's like putting on perfume without taking a bath first of all. You know, the, uh, uh, the equipment very soon will corrode again. Uh, and very quickly we realize we've not addressed the underlying problem. We talk about daily work routine uh, and this idea of five minute cleaning, five minute 5S, is very, very important. It can be at a fixed time every day, maybe at the end of the shift or at the end of the uh, daily uh, work process, or it may be at lunchtime, or it may be first thing in the morning, maybe prompted by a bell or alarm or music. Having a standardized procedure for checking where everyone will participate. And that time is rigidly applied even when on the phone or receiving visitors. From my experience, a similar kind of thing um, in the office that I uh, uh, go to regularly in Japan, nine o'clock every morning, music starts up and everybody does their daily exercises, which is almost like a 5S of the brain. It clears the brain. It helps people to get into the spirit of uh, getting their own bodies, making sure that they are working properly uh, and are uh, uh, prepared for the day ahead rigidly applied even when on the phone or receiving visitors people will stop what they're doing politely of course to take part in that particular activity so here uh, there's an example in an office where somebody's stopping just to uh, clean up their desk tidy their desk make sure that uh, there's nothing uh, that's not needed around and the workplace is not starting to get cluttered so with that, uh, I'll pass over to uh, Shawcat, and Shawcat will talk about uh, section two, which is the uh, 4S, the fourth S, Siketsu uh, standardization. Shawcat, over to you. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, the shining is over now, and uh, the we have completed up to now uh, the. 3S, the 2S in the last module, and uh, the 1S now, and uh, very well explained Dr. Nigel with the example that cleaning is basically cleaning plus inspection. That is why sometimes we call it 5S plus safety, the 6S, because you can detect many things with respect to safety as well 
when you are cleaning. But now, when you have implemented all these three S into your organization, now the time is to standardize these three steps. Because if you will not standardize these three steps, you cannot basically uh, move towards implementation. So the method of standardize for all these first three steps is to standardize the procedures. You can develop different procedures by keeping in mind all these three S. For example, in the first S, that is sorting out, when you will start this exercise, who will start this exercise, which area you will cover, Similarly, for the second S, you have to develop some procedure. For the cleaning, that is the third S, you have to develop some procedure. As Dr. Nigel explained, you can develop checklists, you can assign the duties. But you have to basically write all these things into some of the procedures and based on those procedures, you have to develop the checklist then it would be possible that based on those checklists, somebody can inspect it and somebody can supervise it randomly. And based on the checking and based on those checklists, those do you have developed for all these three S that how much sorting out first S has been implemented, for example, in this section of the organization, how much second S is implemented and how much third S is implemented. Based on the checklist, you can develop that which part or which section of the organization is good or bad. And to give the competition for these three S, you can develop some of the stickers. When I was working into some of the companies, we were developing the good or bad stickers. For example, if my office is well cleaned and all the three S are implemented in good way, somebody will cup and with the with the with the checklist he will check it, and then simple way he will put the sticker on the door that this is bad or this is good. Not by discussing anything. You can see here some of the stickers and uh, good or bad stickers example here that they have put that this is good cleaning this is bad cleaning and this will create a competition this will give the standardization culture of these essays in your in your company next if you cannot make the special checklist for specific plant because on the plant then you have to develop the special checklist the technical checklist you have to take care many uh, safety points as well while you are cleaning or while you are visiting those plants but uh, you can develop the general checklist uh, for the general areas of the organization like for toilets, you can develop the checklist that what things need to be checked in the toilet, what things need to be maintained in the toilet. For the office, you can develop general checklist that how much you will, you can, somebody can go in the office with that checklist and he can see that how much clutter is there in the office, how the files have been organized. So if you will not develop the checklist, you cannot analyze. And when you cannot analyze, you cannot implement. This is a normal saying, if you cannot measure, you cannot manage. So you can measure if you have the checklist. You can measure the implementation of the three S if you have the checklist uh, for all these three S in your organization. You can develop the customized checklist 
for the special areas as well and then you have to train the pupil how to basically develop these checklists and what is mean by each checking point and how they have to check that point into that special area because uh, if you will not train the pupil what is mean by each point then everybody will think and will understand and will perceive the meaning in different way so you have to train the pupil in fulfilling that checklist the purpose of the standardization is to make sure that the entire organization follows the same procedure the same rules the same names same size shapes and color it will give a good impact in your organization when your things are standardized normally if you go into into some of the organization you can see the water pipes color is in green the sewage pipe color is in 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 uh, uh, if i am not forgotten maybe these are the international color they have given to different piping lines you have to develop uh, that color in in basically uh, uh yellow sewage color would be different but it should be same into 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 the organization in the filing also you can decide the different colors for example the inventory file may be or the store file or you can say the procurement files will be in yellow administration files will be in red so you can develop the different colors so that once you see the colors you may understand it so for the different things you have to develop the develop the basically standardization you can you have to think about standardization that how you will organize the file how you will organize the cabinet how you will organize the letters how you will organize even your it system that is the only way that you can detect the unwanted items this is a picture you can see that how the organizations has given the different colors in the different areas and the different colors for the different equipment but if one of the blower is there and its color is red then all the blowers in the company will be at red color and then you have to basically uh, display that scheme color coding scheme into your organization on the different areas so that people may understand that what is mean by this color all these things will create the standardization in your company here you can see that how they have arranged the different color for the different actions required on each paper some paper those need to be heard or those need to be given the decision they have given it yellow some paper on which some procurement is required maybe they have given it it pink so that when it goes into in front of the management they may give the special attention on those color coded paper but definitely it will vary from one organization to another organization but within the organization once you have decided it should be written it should be decided it should be displayed and it should be monitored continuously you have to prepare basically the organization wide departmental check sheets by keeping in mind the first s the second s and the third s and then you can develop the different uh, sub levels you can develop the basically uh, the frequency of that checking you can assign the point if you see on the right side we have displayed one of the just sample checklist 
and based on that checklist then you can audit we will explain you what is mean by audit in the coming slides but uh, definitely first part before the audit is to standardize the things and then develop the checklist develop the procedures for each s thank you nigel over to nigel okay thanks thanks your cat so uh, i will come back to talk about the fifth s which is shitsuke uh, and basically means sustain it means train and build awareness to cultivate self-discipline you know one of the things we talk about a lot in quality management uh, and particularly in total quality management is the idea of what we call the daily work routine uh, managers should be focused on improving managers shouldn't be focused on making sure everybody does what they are supposed to do anyway that should take care of itself that becomes a habit and that is what we mean by this idea of having things standardized having things so that everybody knows what we call the five w's and one h we'll talk much more about five w one h uh, later in the series of, uh, of of training but five w it stands for who what when where why and how the how is very much the operational part so what we need to make sure is that all these first four S's that we talked about, they get into our bloodstream, they get into our DNA, and it just becomes a matter of doing things automatically without having to have the manager or the uh, section head coming along and say, have you done this? Have you done that? We've already done it because it is part of our daily work routine. We don't want to have that policing. We want to have the self discipline so the sustained procedure means make sure that everybody is committed to the program we can motivate people by having healthy competitions giving prizes for those organize those parts of the organization uh, that have the best performance in terms of cleanliness in terms of organization uh, and so on we can enforce discipline to inculcate self-discipline so we have the carrot and the stick uh, approach where people are rewarded for doing good things and i'll not use the word punished but they are disincentivized to do things that are not so good it may just be by peer pressure it may just be by people feeling embarrassed that everybody else's work area is nice and clean and theirs is still a mess we can have a 5s patrol team or an audit team conducting periodic audits, rule observance campaigns, games, encouraging preventative 5S so that we avoid things uh, getting dirty uh, by identifying potential sources of problems. Those potential sources may come from contractors visiting our plant. It may come from visitors visiting our office who are not familiarized with our own internal working mechanism so that patrol or audit team typically will be a cross-level team multifunctional team have a camera it's very very good to have audit evidence in the form of photographs because a good photograph can't lie a photograph a picture is worth a thousand words so rather than trying to describe everything in a written uh, statement or a written report just take photographs so that people can see how their particular part of the organization is actually performing have a checklist show pictures on a notice board or on email that visual uh, management is very very important so that people can see how they're performing see how their particular part of the business uh, is doing hopefully if we've done the first two s's correctly even in a manufacturing environment we freed up space where we can put notice boards where we can have little uh, areas maybe with a few plants in uh, 
uh, a nice little area where the foreman or the foreperson can get together with their team and discuss how are we doing? How is our business performance? How are our quality indicators? And associated with that, how are uh, our 5S uh, 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 methods going in our particular department? Share good examples. It's not just about uh, punishing people or identifying bad things. We're all working together in the same organization. Maybe that some one particular department has found a good way of organizing their files or has found a good way to encourage people to lubricate their machinery before they leave. Let's share that and uh, make it a habit throughout the organization. So important considerations in 5S. Uh, in some cases, we can have what we call silver bullet improvements. Uh, the ones that happen very, very quickly typically will be uh, associated with the first two S's or a gradualist, small step, continual improvement approach. We either, we can decide to do it all at once throughout the whole organization, or we can decide to do it via one or two departments working on a pilot basis and then gradually by osmosis moving that throughout the rest of the organization. But the important thing is that management has to take the first initiative. 5S is led by top management. If everybody sees that top management is involved and committed, and you remember my story about the top executives from Nissan Motors at their UK factory, going and doing a very menial task like uh, cleaning out the lavatories, cleaning out the toilets. That really shows that it's something that top management is passionate about uh, and is serious about. And if you can do 5S, then you can do anything. 5S is a kind of barometer that tells you how well the organization is managed. Uh, remember Dr. Deming's words, you know, I don't want to place too much emphasis on this example of the toilets and the washrooms, but it is very, very important from a cultural perspective, from a quality perspective. Dr. Deming, just to remind you, used to say, I can tell how quality conscious an organization is when I go to use the toilet in the production facility. So ask yourselves that question. Somebody were to come to the toilet in my office block, would they think, wow, this is a, a well, uh, well organized culture for quality organization? Or would they come away, you know, uh, pinching their noses and saying, oh, my goodness, if, if the toilets are that bad, imagine what the rest of the place must be like. So implementation of 5S will indicate total participation. It will make the organizations a sales tool. So that if there's an important visitor coming tomorrow or next week, let them come. You know, we don't need to prepare specially uh, uh, clean up the place just to make it uh, look pretty for when the uh, important dignitary comes along because the place is already organized and we can have pride in working there. We'll be talking more again about Dr. Deming, the famous quality guru and his 14 points of management. But one of his very, very important points was, we need to make sure that the workplace is somewhere that people can be proud of. They can be proud of their own work. If, if it's a complete mess, then it's very, very difficult to be able to do that. And so 5S is more than just cleaning. It's about the whole idea of uh, cleansing our heart, cleansing our spirit. Uh, we can see you know, before and after photographs uh, in different parts of the organization, uh, before and after and the improvements that have uh, been undergone. And we maybe put these in the reception area where visitors see first off the, the, the great inroads and the great steps that we are making in terms of improving the organization. We might want to classify three types of workplace. The third class workplace where everybody is messing up the place and there's no one to clean. 
the second class workplace is, which is where people are messing up the place but we have office helpers and cleaners janitorial services and servants to clean up uh, uh, the the work area or a real first class workplace where everybody is disciplined avoids messing things up and everybody participates in the cleaning of course it may be necessary to have specialized cleaners come in and carry out certain parts of the cleaning activities but that's okay as long as we as individuals are responsible for our own place of work and we don't just rely on getting things dirty and somebody else coming in to clean things up um, there is an example in Disney World in Florida where it's very very clear all new employees re receive very very rigorous training each employee is to pick up trash that's found on the ground every visitor is to be greeted with a handshake each employee has to clean up his or her workplace at the end of the shifts and all employees must ad adhere to the dress code in other words be smart be well presented uh, so that we can all be proud of what we do in the organization that can be defined in job descriptions any violations of standards will result in some kind of penalties that needs iron willed leadership it needs discipline from everybody in the organization but at the time of hiring all regulations have to be made very very clear to new employees so that they know if they don't adhere to those rules and regulations and those uh, standards then they're letting the whole team down yeah, it's not this is not about individuals it's about uh, teamwork so with that let me pass back to shortcut and shortcut will talk a little bit about the idea of the uh, 5s audit and then i'll come back and talk about implementation steps Thank you, Dr. Nigel. Uh, basically, I think the first three S that cannot be implemented and sustained properly if we do not have uh, the basically remaining two S in place. And in these two S, basically audit. 5S audit plays a vital role. But before the 5S audit, you have to basically create the culture of the standardization and sustaining. Because if you do not have your own checklist, if you do not have your own procedure for the first 3S, then your audit will would be just uh, nothing so there are two or three options available in the world for this 5s either you have to conduct 5s internal audit by yourself through developing your own checklist and then basically training of your own employees to audit the different areas and the different sections of your organization based on the procedures and the checklist or you have to basically that is called basically in the terms of certification or in the term of conformity that is called internal audit so we will say here for five years it is an internal audit that if you develop your own people and then your people should do the audit but then there is a second party audit you can hire the consultant they can do the audit on your behalf for the different areas of the organization then there is a basically independent third party audit that you can say at the end if you will qualify you can be certified as 5s certified company so these are the basically five three different kind of kind of audits but overall 
there are the five s added have basically uh, these three kind of steps if it is a one day audit in the one day audit just the auditor would review basically your company site he will come and he will check the main areas main target areas he will identify some of the weaknesses and then would give you a summary report the second part of this audit is basically as i mentioned is is a reporting if we divide it now into 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 basically the steps of the audit first step would be basically on site audit then after the on site audit there will be a reporting of the audit and at the end there will be the certification if you will qualify i mean if i brief it it in main steps first is the on site basically review of your document if i put the cursor here then it will be on site audit and then there will be during the on site audit there will be different uh, the different interviews of your people different inspection and different site visit of your organization uh, the auditor will check the level of implementation then in the second step he will prepare the report and then he will give you basically the complete uh, picture that where are your gaps and where are the non conformance where you are doing good in a five step or where you are not going good then he will recommend basically your organization if you improve these areas if you have the gap then you are you are you are uh, five as implementation the auditor can recommend that these are the gaps and after removing these gaps he will give you the basically certification he will discuss the different results of your you are entire 5s implementation with the good points and with the non good points and at the end if you will improve further the gaps that he has mentioned they will certify if you are going for the certification but there are two option to you either you can go for 5s certification or you can go for 5s audit just to get the picture and just to get uh, basically the areas for improvement then you can go for the 5s audit as well but overall the 5s audit either you do internal audit through your own people or you do basically the external audit through the third party auditor for certification purpose would basically give you real benefit for the sustaining 5s audit into your organization thank you yeah i think that's excellent um uh, shortcut because there is a similarity here uh, i know part of the overall objectives of the program in in west africa is looking at iso 9000 certification uh, but the important thing is to have the system in place Uh, of course it's good to have an external independent viewpoint um and that external independent viewpoint gives a balanced opinion uh, uh, uh from somebody who is not uh, involved in the day to day routine of the company um and the same thing applies to ISO 9001 uh ISO 9001 certification is not compulsory but it's a way that many organizations choose in order to achieve recognition of the good work that they are doing and i think the same thing applies here in in 5s uh, 5s you don't have to get certified but an external uh, independent audit can be very very useful in giving that uh, uh, perspective of how you are doing compared to other organizations 
So as Shokat said, the, the final part of our presentation today uh, is regarding the implementation strategy. Uh, as we said, and uh, as I think you've seen, the, uh, the implementation strategy requires commitment and participation from senior management, from internal staff, eventually from subcontractors or uh, um, uh, hired employees who are not part of the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, full-time employees. Typically, we would expect to set up a 5S committee, including a coordinator and representatives of different sites or different departments to implement 5S throughout the organization. Establish a 5S policy. What, you, what do you want to achieve with the 5S program? Why is it important? Why is everybody's involvement uh, important? Define measurable objectives. Shokat mentioned earlier, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Now, they may be objectives that are measurable by looking at photographs or comparing with model factories, benchmarking and so on, and then defining the various responsibilities. Determine a 5S activity schedule. When you will carry out the, for example, the, the SERI uh, or the uh, uh, the, the standard, uh, standardization phase or the sustained phase, what will be the implementation chart? Establish implementation guidelines and criteria and establish some kind of a review mechanism. This is what we customly know as the plan, do, check, act cycle. We, we know that that plan, do, check, act cycle is very, very important throughout any management system. So the second part of the implementing do phase, provide training, provide training to staff, subcontractors, multiply this course that Shokat and I have, have presented to you, multiply that throughout the other people within your organizations, facilitate the discussion, make sure that they are aware and on board with all of this. You know, a, a, um, a well-implemented system, whether it's 5S or quality or whatever, it doesn't depend on the hard work of a few people. It's like a rowing team. If everybody is working hard and they're all rowing and pulling the oars in the different direction, then you will go nowhere. What we need is a coordinated, well-conceived effort from a lot of people ideally everybody in the organization. Announce the 5S implementation, the relevant marketing activities within that. So it may be appropriate to involve the human resources uh, department or the uh, internal communications department. Make a trial run. You don't necessarily have to do all of this at once. Uh, you remember earlier we talked about the silver bullet. Do we try to do it on an organization wide level? Or is it better to do it in pilot parts of the organization, a pilot department that we can then showcase and bring other people along and that they can start to see the benefits and the results. Have a daily, uh, have a morning meeting to plan 5S activities, daily debriefing to review the accomplishments. This doesn't need to be a long formal bureaucratic meeting. It may just be a stand up meeting uh, of five minutes where the uh, foreman or the supervisor just stands with the employees and discusses what they've done and what they've achieved. Review and implement results, continue the internal assessments and conclude, improve, recognize and exhibit uh, in a very clear way the 5S effort and the results. And once you've done that, then you're ready for a formal launch on a company-wide basis. So typically a 5S meeting agenda, there will be a welcome, there will be an overview of the 5S, uh, some sort of a result of the tour, uh, a walk through the factory or a walk through the organization. The Japanese uh, talk a lot about what they call the president's audit. 
This is something that uh, I've experienced personally, where the president of the organization or the chief executive will just walk around. It's what Tom Peters, the great management guru, talks about managing by walking around. Walking around and talking to people and observing and seeing what's happening rather than just staying cooped up in the you know, nice uh, office with a closed door and not really knowing what's going on uh, on the shop floor. Process improvement uh, presentations, experience sharing, awards and recognition, opening discussion, open discussion among everybody so that everybody's willing to share their experiences and then uh, a short closing meeting. So that's the plan and the do, and then we have the check and the act. We need to monitor the achievement of the 5S objectives, and Shawcamp already talked about the audit, the idea of a, a cross-functional, independent audit team that probably is internal, or occasionally we may want to bring somebody in from outside. Announce the results, appreciate the team, uh, reward the team, and I don't mean monetary rewards. It may just be by recognition of the peers, you know, by uh, uh, a simple clapping of the hands and, and, and recognition that somebody's done a good job. Review and continual improvement and making the 5S system part of the overall management system and routine activities. So it's not something that, oh, tomorrow we're going to do 5S. 5S becomes something that you do every minute of every day of the rest of your professional career. 